Hello, everyone. It's my pleasure to share our recent work with you. My talk is Pan Genome Analysis in Sorghum, highlights the extent of genomic variation and sugarcane feed resistance genes. At the beginning, I'd like to uh, give you a little bit of background about um, Sorghum, and then I will talk about the genome assembly and annotations, structural variations, and the pan genome construction. At the last of my talk, I will tell you some information about the sugarcane feed resistant genes in sorghum. Talking about the sorghum, sorghum is the fifth most economically important cereal in the world. It's also well known as camera of the grass family because it has very high tolerance to heat and drought. And what I'm showing you here in this slide is some food made from sorghum, such as popped sorghum, sorghum muffin, sorghum bread, and many other foods that are made from sorghum. Uh, one very important um, uh, factor related to sorghum research is the um, um, sorghum genome. To, uh, to date, there are three sorghum genomes in the community. One is the PTS623. This is also a reference genome. Uh, this genome was sequenced in 2009 and updated in, updated in 2017. And um, another one is RTS 430. Uh, this genome was sequenced um, in 2018 by Cordiva, it was a nanopore technology. And the real genome, uh, this was um, sequenced in 2019. So uh, with the sequence technology um, improved and uh, the sequence cost has decreased uh, nowadays, the genome study has uh, started into a pan-genome error. So uh, more high quality genomes are necessary to assist the sorghum genome research. In this study, we sequence uh, two genomes. Uh, one is, uh, uh, is uh, TS2783. Uh, this uh, line is a um, high uh, short can feed resistance line, and the other one is RTS436. This is a widely adapted uh, pollinator parent used in the development uh, of high yielding hybrids. To um, assemble the high quality genome of these two, gen uh, two lines, uh, we use the pipe along with the sequence and the uh, scaffold with uh, binano maps. What I'm showing you here is the number of scaffolds for each genome. You can see for TR273, um, it has 19 scaffolds, and for RTX 436, it has um, 18 scaffolds. If you look at the uh, detailed number of the assembly, you can see the counting N50 uh, for TR273 has reached 25.6 uh, megabits. And the counting N50 for RTX 436 has reached 20.3 megabits. Uh, if we look at the scaffold N50 size, uh, these two genomes are more than 36 um, megabits. Um, on the other hand, um, gene space assignment using BOOSCO uh, also confirmed the completeness of the two uh, genomes in this study. Compared with um, uh, other three public released genomes, uh, you can see actually our two genomes uh, are best quality uh, sorghum genomes so far. Um, no matter um, number of conics or size or ton conic N50, you can see uh, they are much better than the previous three um, genomes. Um, next step, uh, we annotated the uh, uh, transposon elements and the genes uh, in these two genomes. For the transposon elements, uh, we found that LTR gives it uh, is the most abundant uh, TEs um, in the genome. And uh, overall, we say that 69% uh, of the genome are uh, uh, transposon elements. And uh, for the gene elements, for the gene annotation, uh, we use the hybrid uh, model annotation pipeline, uh, which is evidence based um, uh, annotation uh, at workflow one, and um, can supplement uh, with the AB initial gene model prediction using breaker and workflow two. So combine these two workflow, you know, we are able to generate a very high um, confidence gene set uh, for the genomes. So this is a summary of the protein cleaning gene uh, for these two genomes. Uh, we annotated about uh, uh, more than 29,000 protein cleaning genes uh, plus 4,000 um, uh, non cleaning genes uh, in these two genomes. To assess the completeness of the fan parameter UTR uh, transcription start site, we use the root and the root tissues uh, to perform the rampage experiment. Rampage is a sequence approach designed to identify transcription start size at a base pair resolution. Uh, look at the um, rampage signal distribution, you can see 
uh, the signal was um, uh, enriched uh, at the uh, transistor side. So this has confirmed that uh, uh, the transistor side were well um, annotated in the uh, two genomes in this study. Um, in addition, we also looked at the gene synthesis uh, between TL2, to some of three and other genomes. Uh, what I'm showing you here is um, different uh, um, alignment uh, of genes um, between uh, different genomes. Uh, as you can see, overall, they have very good uh, synthesis. Uh, where we see some rearrangements that detected uh, between each two genomes, uh, most of them, they consider large synthetic blocks uh, with high degree of collinearity. Um, and now we have genomes, uh, this have, um, we have multiple genomes, this have enabled us to study the genetic variations uh, using these genomes. Um, to, uh, look at the start, to look at the structural variations, we use both nano, binano map and uh, whole genome alignment. Um, the initial assessment of large structural variations uh, was obtained by comparing BTS-623 binano map uh, to BTS-623 um, uh, Warren-3 uh, reference genome sequence. Um, this comparison uh, reveals there are some large inversions existing in uh, Warren 3 reference genome. And uh, this uh, inversion is also um, existed uh, when we compare the uh, TS273, TS, uh, TS436 uh, with uh, uh, BTS 2003 Warren, Warren 3 uh, reference genome sequence. But uh, this large inversion is um, absent when we compare TS273. Uh, uh, to TS436, um, and also we may compare TS273 uh, uh, with the BTS uh, uh, C3 uh, maps. So this means there are misassembly in current uh, one 3 um, BTS C3 reference genome sequence. And this is uh, one example showing that the large uh, inverted exists in the one 3 reference sequence. So based on this uh, assessment, uh, uh, we decided to use um, TS273 as a reference genome to cause structural variations uh, for the Romania analysis. Um, for the structural variations, it um, basically includes uh, SNPs and the larger structural variations. Uh, large structural variations um, have different classes um, shown in this slide. Uh, SNPs are usually very abundant uh, in the genome and uh, it has been used uh, for the GWAS2 uh, mark genome fragments uh, that are related to um, uh, certain traits. Uh, in this study, we use the TL273 as a reference genome and call the SNPs um, uh, for each uh, genome. Uh, overall, we say that RTS430 and RTS436 uh, have the most number of SNPs. This is also consistent with their uh, phylogenetic uh, position in the tree. And uh, we then uh, predict the uh, deleterious mutation using these SNPs. Uh, and uh, found that uh, 183 genes were shared among all the genomes. And uh, these um, genes, their function analysis uh, by gene ontology analysis showed that they have, they are associated with the molecular function and the biological processes. Um, uh, different with the SNPs, uh, as always, uh, maybe less common um, than SNPs, uh, but as always, uh, have larger as always, they have. Uh, potential more important roles because uh, their size and uh, they can alter the gene expression, change the gene structure, and also cause gene dosage um, difference. So in this study, we call the structural variations uh, using TF273 as a reference genome. And the structural variations we call include the uh, inversion deletion, uh, copy number variation, and the inversion. Uh, overall, these, large, these structural variations are in uh, reached at the uh, chromosome terminal region, uh, but um, different uh, as ways uh, may differ according to different uh, individual genomes. Uh, we also looked at the overlap as ways in each genome. And what I'm showing you here is the genotype specific and the common as ways in indicated genomes. Uh, as a result, as ways are mostly um, in the intergenic region. Um, but for those um, as ways uh, that are overlapping on genes, uh, they may have larger effects uh, because uh, they may change the gene function uh, in that um, region. Um, we also see a very good correlation uh, on overlapping genes, on number of overlapping genes with the size of as ways. So 
Uh, the larger SV that usually have more overlapping uh, genes in that region, in that region. Combined with SNPs and uh, SVs, uh, we see a good correlation between SNPs and inversions uh, and deletions. Uh, but this uh, correlation becomes lower uh, when between uh, SNPs and uh, CNVs and inversions. Um, one important uh, category of structural variations uh, is uh, copy number variations. Copy number variations have been found uh, very important uh, uh, to plan development. So we looked at the number of uh, and the number of copy number variations and their size distribution. So overall, uh, the four genome have similar number of same ways and uh, with the slide BDIC23 slightly um, a smaller number in this genome. And the smaller same way that you will have more common numbers uh, in the uh, genome. So now we have uh, as we that we have multiple genomes. So as mentioned earlier, uh, genome study has stepped into a pan-genome era because a single reference gene doesn't, uh, doesn't represent uh, the genetic diversity in that uh, species. Um, a pan-genome identifies uh, uh, which portion of the genome are unique and uh, which portions are uh, core to the species. Uh, one example is um, maize and sorghum. You can see uh, the maize kernel has different uh, size and the different shapes of the um, different shapes, and uh, for the sorghum in Florida, they also have different. Uh, they also have different uh, phenotypes. So these um, uh, different phenotypes, uh, uh, to a degree, is caused by the unique and dependable genes identified in the pan genome. So therefore, it's very meaningful to find this um, current dispensable genes uh, for sorghum. Um, to assess the sorghum core and dispensable genes, we firstly constructed a pan genome using TF273 as a reference genome and added the inductions of SV from other four complete genomes. This yields uh, uh, pan genome size uh, with 825 megabits. Uh, then we mapped the uh, C2 genome resequence data uh, to this pan genome, constructed a gene tree, constructed a phylogenetic tree, and um, uh, identified the core um, dispensable genes based on, on the gene coverage from these um, genomes. As a result, we identified 56% uh, of the genes are core genes, 11% uh, of the genes are soft core genes, 32% of the genes are dispensable genes, and 0.5% uh, are private genes. Among these genes, one, um, uh, one typical class of the genes are uh, disease resistant genes. Disease resistant genes are usually um, have multiple copies, have multiple copies, and uh, to, characterize, to characterize disease resistant genes in uh, maize and sorghum, we did a whole genome scan and found that the maize has uh, far less the far less uh, uh, genes than sorghum. Whole genome scan of our genes in each of the sorghum genome. Uh, showed that RTS430 has the largest number of genes, Rio has the fewest number of genes, and these genes are usually are mostly distributed on chromosome 5 and uh, chromosome 8, these two genomes. Um, one uh, biggest threat to sorghum yield is the sugar cane aphids. Uh, since 2019, sugar cane have been causing enormous damage to sorghum crop in the US. Um, so uh, the TI273, uh, from the TI273, in this study, it has very high resistance to shrunk hay feed. Um, you can see from the phenotype, it's a very high uh, shrunk hay feed. Um, so in this study, to find the shrunk hay feed resistant loci, we firstly constructed a real population using TL273 and uh, BTS C293 um, as parents. And uh, uh, we identified the candidate region on chromosome 6, uh, uh, chromosome 6. Um, Genome sequence analysis revealed that uh, there was a uh, complex region which has a columnar repeat in the short heavy region and region. So uh, this uh, sequence was uh, this sequence was missing at the beginning in the assembly. Then we did a manual correction of this um, locus and uh, uh, captured this uh, complex uh, sequence uh, in the final assembly. Our structural variation analysis also revealed that there, uh, there are 11 inductions in TF273 uh, compared to BTS C23 genome. And the largest inversion is 191 KB, uh, 
this uh, region contains six uh, disease region of genes. And um, they are also too small as induction in the flanking the bigger induction. And uh, uh, they, there are two uh, regional genes in these two small uh, inductions. Gene neighborhood will uh, uh, of the um, gene, regional genes in this region revealed that uh, there is a uh, uh, there are 10 gene cluster, 10 regional genes uh, in the uh, LCA locus, uh, you can see uh, from this view. And uh, uh, there are only about, there are only three regional genes in, uh, in this um, region in BTS 63 So uh, it's possible that uh, gene donations in TL2003 um, play very important roles in response to uh, short and effect uh, infestation. Um, and then uh, we look at the um, uh, population data about uh, these 10 gene clusters. Um, we can see the 10 gene clusters actually they, uh, segregating with the population uh, uh, compared to the gene upstream and down, uh, downstream the 10 gene clusters. So uh, to look at the to look at the gene sparse pattern uh, before and after uh, short heavy the infestation, we uh, mapped the RNC data uh, to the TS two thousand three. And uh, we find a lot, we find a diverse experimenting of genes uh, before and after short game feed infestation. So these uh, different genes could um, function in different ways uh, to short game feed, um, to short game feed infestation. And uh, looking at the 10 gene cluster, we find that five of the uh, 10 genes are expressed uh, after short game feed infestation. It's probably uh, after the five day infestation, uh, these 10 genes, these five genes are increased expression. Uh, so we think that uh, these five genes may play larger roles uh, in response to strong effect. So as a summary, uh, in this study, we assembled and annotated the two high quality sample genomes, TR2003 and RTS436, using PIPAL and by nanotechnology. We identified the missing assembly regions in BTS2003 reference genome, color snips and structural variations using TR2003 as reference genome. Um, we constructed a sorghum pine genome and uh, identified the core and uh, uh, dispensable genes from C2 genome receiving data using this pine genome. Uh, we reported the one short can feed return region in this study, which is associated with um, short can feed, uh, uh, associated with structural variations. And the gene dosage uh, could um, be very important uh, for um, short can feed resistance in TF2003. I'd like to uh, thank my colleagues for their help in this uh, work. People in Wire Lab and also uh, Victor uh, coming from Cordiva for their help on the genome. And uh, folks from USD on short and effect work. Um, Tom and John uh, for Rampage Library construction at the CFHL. Mm, thank you all.